we got the news on Friday that uh, Mandisa um, has passed away as well. And um, Mandisa was uh, 47, and uh, she got her start from American Idol. And I tell you, um, losing uh, two people in six days is not not the easiest thing, um, especially you know people that knew her and loved her and. Uh, they're just going through a whole lot now, and um, but I'll tell you what, I've never seen, you know, so much support when when tragedy happens, people rally around um, everyone and pull people up when they're down, and uh, that's exactly what Nashville has done uh, these past few days. Um, it's been all over the news and just the the love that she had for people and the love that um, she left with people. And it's, um, it shows throughout all of, um, you know, social media and obviously all the the news outlets that has been reporting this because of the love that she, that she showed to people. And we're going to just take a few moments right now. We're going to just share uh, some of the artists that have poured out um, their love and some memories of Mandisa. And then we're going to share some scriptures with you and stuff like that. But um, Danny Goki uh, reached out and he said he's devastated to hear about the sudden loss of Mandisa. He says, not only did we connect over being American Idol alumni, but we had a great time on the road during several tours together. Her joy was infectious and I loved her heart to encourage people on and off stage. And then Natalie Grant said, I'm, I can't quite find the words when I learned of your passing. I begged God for it not to be true. I remember making our Opry debut together. We were so excited, but I remember our conversation so vividly. You belonged there. You belonged, Disa. And Colton Dixon said, man, Disa is the sweetest, kindest so uh, that him and his wife have met on the road. After hearing she went to be with Jesus last night, I was reflecting this morning on the times we had together, remembering we shared a bus on the Hope, on the Toby Mac Hits Deep Tour where I would sing her song Good Morning to her every single morning. And Toby Mac, which real close friend of Mandy, says, he says, we lost a beautiful soul. I've never met an artist who is more encouraging and supportive to other artists than Mandy. Says. She was honest and authentic. But I always left her side feeling better. She watched every act every night on every tour, singing along with a smile that made you feel alive. From Lose My Soul to Bleed the Same to Good Morning, I was honored not only to collaborate with her, but to call her friend. And then we will close with this tribute uh, from American Idol. Actually, let let me read two more, guys. American Idol says Mandisa was an honored icon on American Idol and in the music industry. She had become a platinum selling artist and had won several Grammys for her music. Her passing has left everyone on the show heartbroken. And then uh, Matthew West, um, he actually shared uh, some lyrics of hers. But he said, I'm, an, I'm so incredibly saddened to hear her about the loss of my friend Mandisa and I will always cherish the memories of times we spent together hosting award shows going on tour most of all helping her tell her story in the songwriting room and he says the first song she released after appearing on american idol was a song we wrote together called only the world and he says in the lyrics hit different right now and these are the lyrics to her song it says heaven is a place where the tears on every face will be wiped away oh and i can't wait to go but for now, it's enough to know this is only temporary. This is only, yes, it's only the world I'm living in. It's only today I've been given. There ain't no way I'm given in because it's only the world. I know the best is still yet to come because even when my days in the world are done, there's going to be so much more than only the world for me. It's a very appropriate um, lyrics, uh, especially dealing with her passing. Just knowing that there's know something that we're looking forward to as followers of christ Uh, and i think about you know i thought this week when i heard um this just a few days ago of her passing one of the first things i thought about was actually the uh one of the memory that i had with uh, mandisa several years ago before we were um youth pastors or before i was a youth pastor we uh 
we were in staff at a missions organization for several years, and uh, it's called YWAM. And so where we were located was um, on this church property, and the church would host concerts every once in a while. And because we were like, you know, young missionary guys, uh, we would get volunteered to like set up and break down concerts and stuff. And uh, one of the concerts was Brandon Heath and uh, Mandisa. They came to the church and we set everything up with them and broke it down. And I remember her being there. Um, like she stayed after the, like, cause we set them up and they did the sound check. And I thought, you know, I thought it was fun. It's kind of seeing, seeing kind of behind the scenes, how they do everything. I thought that was really neat. Uh, but I just remember her being very kind uh, to, to everybody, everyone that was setting things up, the volunteers. Uh, she was having conversations with people and she wasn't, you know, in too big of a hurry. Uh, I remember her, uh, yeah, just really being genuinely, um, like I, I remember yeah. that struck me cause I was like, oh man. And, and Brandon was kind too, not, not to, you know, not that he didn't do that too. He was there, but I just remember her being super generous with uh, hanging out with people. And then actually that, that evening, so we ended up going to the concert and then afterwards, um, we got in line, I guess, to do like the meet and greet. And we started talking cause we were in missions and we were getting ready to go to Peru and we had to do all this fundraising and, and we had actually met like the week before that, um, her pastor, uh, Dave Beering had come and, uh, shared in my, like a teaching in my class that I was going through at the mission school. And he had mentioned, he was like, Oh yeah, man, I, you know, I'm, I'm really good friends with Mandisa and she's such a wonderful woman. So I just mentioned to her, I was like, Hey, you know, I'm, I, I know Dave and, and, and she was like, Oh, he's the best. He's so wonderful. And that just kind of started this conversation about missions and everything. And she, we, we ended up recording a video with her because like I said, we were going to Peru and my team and I had to raise money. And so she, she was so for helping out and uh, she ended up recording a video with a few of us, uh, just like, you know, Hey, this is Mandisa. And she was super excited about us going to Peru and to be praying for him and to consider giving. And she, she took her time to do this video and was super, uh, you know, generous. And, and it, you know, we were the last ones in line, uh, cause we were kind of helping set, you know, tear things down, like I said, and it was late, but she was so kind. Uh, I, I do remember even after recording that video, um, she had, she, she was just like, Hey, sit down. And she asked like, where we were going, what we were doing, what other trips we have been on. She was super interested in hearing our stories and asking uh, how we got into missions and what that looked like. And, and you didn't get the sense that she was too important or that, you know, she was the one that just did the concert and her name was in, you know, on the side of the bus or whatever. Uh, she was super kind and really, really loved on the people that she was talking to. So yeah, like as I heard um, of her passing, I just remembered that, that time and those moments with her and just, it makes sense. All the people that are, um, you know, you read sharing about her passing and the type of person she was. I mean, I definitely experienced that firsthand. Uh, and so, yeah, she was definitely somebody who loved the Lord. Yeah. And it was obvious by the way yeah, that she lived we were, and the way that she treated uh, other people. On the Jesus Freak cruise, the, the last cruise, I believe that was 2018, 2019. Um, and she was on there and we went, well, you guys had the opportunity to go, but you, you wasn't able to go. But we, uh, uh, it was me and my wife and my mom and uh, my wife was doing something, but me and my mom were, I think, probably going to meet my wife. And so we get on the elevator and there stands Mandisa. And um, she, you could tell she was just came from outside because it was really hot, and she had a little mini fan that she was holding in her hand. And I said, "Hey, Mandisa," and she goes, "Hey," or whatever. And uh, we were talking to her for a minute, and uh, she was like, you know, asked our names, and we told her and everything. And so uh, I said, "Yeah, it's hot out there," or whatever. And she goes, "Yes, it's so hot, but I wouldn't miss this for the world." And so she just and she started laughing and. I'll never forget that laugh. And, you know, I've heard her laugh before when I've seen her before, but man, she just had a contagious laugh. And, uh, and she was so kind to just talk to us on the elevator and then a little bit off the elevator. And so 
uh, yeah, so she, you know, she really touched a whole lot of people and uh, had a huge impact on so many people's lives. And uh, yeah, and as we remember uh, Mandisa and, uh, you know, stories and songs that encouraged people in the way that she pointed people to Christ, uh, we as her brothers and sisters uh, in Christ, uh, we have hope. And we read in scripture, uh, Paul even talks about Romans chapter 8, where he says, I'm convinced that neither life nor death nor angels nor rulers or things present or to come uh, separates us from the love of Christ. We have hope uh, that even in death we have victory because of what Christ has done for us on the cross. And so uh, I'd like to read from Thessalonians actually uh, chapter 4. And I'll read a few verses um, that are an encouragement as believers for us to remember uh, when someone does pass, especially when it's, uh, you know, young and uh, and it's difficult to deal with. But there's encouragement in Scripture and hope in Christ. And so I'll read uh, from Thessalonians 4. My friends, we want you to understand how it will be for those followers who have already died. Then you won't grieve over them and be like people who do not have hope. We believe that Jesus died and was raised to life. and We also believe when God brings Jesus back again, he will bring with him all who had faith in Jesus before they died. Our Lord Jesus told us that when he comes, we will not go up to meet him ahead of his followers who have already died. They go first. So with a loud command and a shout of the chief angel, In the blast of God's trumpet, the Lord will return from heaven, and those who had faith in Christ before they died will also be raised to life. Next, all of us who are still alive will be taken up to the clouds together to meet the Lord in the sky. And from that time on, we will all be with the Lord forever. Then it says, encourage each other with these words. As followers of Christ, we can stand on that. We know that whether we live until the Lord comes home and returns in the sky or whether we um, you know we're not promised tomorrow tomorrow whether we die uh, in a hundred and you know in 50 years or in 50 days there's hope that we have an encouragement from these words that we're all going those those who believe in Christ uh, to a place that he has prepared for us <clears throat> and there's hope in that that's a guarantee so like it said at the beginning of those verses I read where it says we have something that people who don't believe in Christ do we have an understanding and so we don't have to stay in grief uh, because we know the promise of Jesus and what him being raised to life means for us and so you know like the scriptures also say in Ecclesiastes that there's definitely there's a time for every season under the sun right like it says in Ecclesiastes uh, 3 there's a time that you know things are going to be built up and things are going to be broken down for healing. But then it says that there's a time to weep and a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn and a time to dance. I think that's very appropriate right now thinking about Mandisa because there's definitely a time for mourning. And those who loved her and were touched by her life and her music will mourn. And it's appropriate. It's right for them to mourn. Yet we don't stay there. As believers and followers of Christ, it says there's a time to mourn, and then there's a time to dance, time to celebrate. Because of the hope that we have in our resurrected Savior and the work on the cross, we can turn mourning to dancing because of his work. And so we have hope. We have uh, have a lot of joy uh, knowing that. 